Hi guys, this is Tash. How are you all going? It's been such a long time. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you for at least like 12 hours. Um, yeah, <laughs> this video today is about Year of Whips. So I'm going to show you all the pieces that I would like to get finished by the end of the year. I might be a little optimistic in actually getting all of these finished. Um, <laughs> and this certainly probably won't be an exhaustive list of what I will finish. But this is my plan of the whips that I have at the moment that I want to get done by the end of the year. Um, let's talk about my shirt. I went to see Muse in December. Uh, that was so good. Oh my gosh. Best, best night. Best night ever. So good. If you like Muse, go and see them live. They were so good. Matthew Bellamy's voice. Oh my god. <sighs> I don't go to a lot of concerts. I'm not a big partier, but it was amazing. Anyway, let's get to work. So the first whip that I want to finish this year is called Angle of Love by Cross-Eyed Cat. Um, and this one is one that I've had in my stash for a long time. I started it in Mania. It's a bit nerdy, if you can see there's like math equations all over the heart. But really, is there an equation to love? No, there isn't. Um, anyway, this is the progress I currently have. I'm stitching it on 14 count white Ada. You can see I've just done one of the quadrants. Um, and the threads I'm using are actually threads that a friend of mine died um, in sort of a stitchy exchange many years ago. So I said my favorite color is red, so she made me four sort of pink, red, purpley colors, and I love them. And I'll just use DMC 310 for the back stitch. There you go, Angle of Love by Cross-Eyed Cat. That'll be quick. I have no <laughs> no doubt that I will finish that this year. Um, I've got so much stuff here, it's quite hard to move around the piles. Okay, the next thing I want to finish is going to be the Bellas. This project has four charts. There are, so this is one chart, there's another chart with two designs in it. I've already done Bella B. Um, I'd like to finish Bella Butterfly. And this is what I've done so far. I started this in December, um, early December I started six whips in one day and that's because I wanted whips for the year of whips. Um, the rule at that time was all your whips have to be started. So I made a lot of starts so that because I knew I wanted to work on these things next year so I started them so that I could do them in year of whips. So yeah, Bella Butterfly from the Nora Corbett Bella series. This is 32 count antique white Lugana, very simple. So that's number two. Melanie has since changed the rule. Your um, year of whips pieces don't actually have to be started on the 18th. Um, you know, you just have to make sure that you show them in your beginning of the year video. So you, you have a plan already to start them. Um, pieces three and four for year of whips are Bella Rose and Bella Hydrangea. And obviously they're part of the same series by Nora Corbett. Um, the series is called Bella Portraits. By Nora Corbett. So that's four. Number five is a big one and I'm not sure if I'll finish this one. <laughs> I want to, I think I will. This is uh, the Celtic Sampler by The Needles Praise. Um, I would like to finish this half. So this is a two-part design. This is the first half, the second half is the same size and goes directly next to it. Um, I'd like to finish all of the stitching on this, but not all of the metallics. Um, the reason for that, you can see all these white parts here, 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 here. That's all going to be filled in with metallics. Um, but what I want to do is do all the stitching, the silk stitching on the first part and the second part, and then wash it before I do the metallics, because the metallics that this uses aren't like, um, it's not like Chronic or Treasure Braid, it's like braid and I don't know. I'll show you when I get it out. That won't be this year or next year or the year after. Um, but those metallics can't be washed so all I want to do on this is finish the stitching. Now I haven't asked Melanie specifically if that will count as a whip for year of whips if I just finish the stitching and not the metallics um, but I'll count it for myself at least so whether this is official or not this is my next piece that I like to finish and it should be achievable. I'm sort of stuck at the moment with all this queen stitching. 
I think my strategy for getting work actually done on this is to break up the queen stitching with some of the other um, the other areas that don't have queen stitches. So yeah, I think that's how I have to tackle it. So there we go, Celtic Sampler by The Needle's Praise. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I love that, that's my favorite whip. Um, so that was number five. Number six, Contessa with Squid by Omar Rayan. This is obviously Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, it's a big one. I started this, this was my new year, new start for 2017. And I did one page and a bit, but that's obviously the edge of the first page there. Um, I did an extra thousand or so stitches. I think that was the day, the day I did a thousand stitches in one day. <laughs> um, yep. So my goal is to do page two. That's all. <laughs> no, not a lofty goal really, but that's my goal. Page two. And that'll be fun because that will give me a bit of these tentacles here. Ooh, I like tentacles. I love squid and octopus and cephalopods in general. I love them. I'm reading an audiobook right now called Other Minds. My god, they are fascinating creatures. They're amazing. So I love her. She's so sexy. She's so sexy. Um, Omar Rayan is the artist who also did The Favourite, which is the one that Itty Bitty Stitchy is doing. The one where it's a little girl in a dress holding her dog, but her dog is this huge, gigantic beast with sharp teeth and it's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> I love this artist. He's my favourite. I want everything he ever did. Um, <clears throat> so that was number six. Uh, come on. Okay. Number seven, Fir Tree Mountain by The Cat's Whiskers. Um, I'm not sure if these charts are still available anymore. I don't know, I'm sorry. I started this in 2007, I think. Um, it's part of a set of three. As you can see, there's Cherry Blossom Spring and uh, Shades of Blue Willow. And I made each of these for two friends. I used to work on night shifts in a nursing home. And three of us were stitchers, so we used to spend the night stitching um, in between the actual work. So they're the ones I've done for my friends. I might put in pictures here of the work I did for my friends. And this is how much I've got done. This last one is going to be for me. So this is how much I've got done so far. Not very much. <laughs> I think I did most of this during Mania, so it does in Mania, I worked on this for one day, so it does stitch up quite fast. Um, pretty quick. I love this. Um, I realise there are three pieces there, but I'm just counting it as one project because it is one project to me. Um, yeah, so I'd like to finish this and FFO this this year. And I think it's completely achievable. And I have FFO'd them before, so I know I can do it. I just don't remember how I did it. That's the problem. <laughs> Um, so that was number seven. Number eight is Fire and Ice by Custom Creations. Ugh, it's very see-through. Let me hold it there. Does that help? Ooh, I need something behind. That's a bit better. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one before. It's a big horse. Um, it looks like it's illuminated from the side by a raging bushfire or something and it's quite dramatic. Um, I started this in 2006 or 5 I think. I think this is my oldest whip um, which is obviously a good reason why I want to get it finished this year. Um, not sure if it's my taste anymore so when I finish it I might pass it on to someone else who will appreciate it more. Gift it to someone who will appreciate it more. Um, but there you go. It is dramatic and it does look amazing. I think I got, the reason I stopped working on this um, wasn't because of the black linen. It's black, I think it's 28 count, could be 32 count, I don't know. Um, I don't have a problem with black linen, I have used it a few times and I like it. Um, but I think I just got bored of a limited colour palette and it was big. Um, it's six pages, basically that's page one. Um, so there's a lot of work in it. But I think if I start using parking, it'll actually come up a lot quicker. So, yeah. 
I'm looking forward to working on this actually because even though it's not my taste anymore, it's fun to stitch. Okay, sorry, I was just making sure my needle didn't drop out. <coughs> so that was number eight for Iron Dice. Number nine is Gamer Nouveau. This is actually number nine and number ten. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen people working on this. It's called The Gamer. The artwork is by Medusa Dollmaker and it's kitted by Gecko Rouge. Um, Gecko Rouge is a company that does the full coverage designs but only sells kits. They don't just sell the charts alone. So they're really expensive, but I wanted to stitch this one, so I paid for it. Um, yep. So I did page one, obviously. I've come down into page two. That's the bottom of page two there. Um, I just need to, sorry, this is actually page eight. Page two is to the side here. So number nine and 10 is to finish page eight and page two. Um, I was going to, to work this in columns going down rather than rows across, but I realized that that's not going to work, especially if I put it on a scroll frame like that, like this, because um, this will get bulky as I'm rolling it up and it'll mess up the tension. So yeah, I have a lot of needle miners on this one. I love all of them. I hate the fabric on this. <laughs> um, nothing actually wrong with the fabric itself, but I hate that it's... Um, only gridded in 20 by 20 so and the chart is gridded in 10 by 10 so I keep messing up the corner I'm counting from yeah next time I do this I'll use that easy guide that actually is gridded in 10 by 10s yeah um love it I ha I do use um, a water soluble marker to grid out the 10 by 10 lines as well but I still get confused I have a very little brain <laughs> um so yeah that'll be page 8 and page 2 that's what I love that's what I would like to finish on this this year. Um, so that is 9 and 10. Number 11 is Gaze a While by The Heart's Content. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I'm sorry. Oh, I haven't even turned my light on. That's better. Gaze a While. The Heart's Content. This came as a kit. All the silk is just loose like that. It's a Vera Soir. No, Soir d'Alger. Silk. You can see how shimmery that silk is just in the plastic. Oh, it's gorgeous. So, uh, this is super see-through, so there's where I'm up to on that. Um, yeah, there's these silk gauze kits. They're not hard to do. They take quite a while, though, because even though it looks tiny, uh, I don't have a stitch count on here, but I think it's 100 wide by 180 tall or something so they do they are pretty big projects really so there you go gaze a while I wanted to finish this last year but I didn't but I should be able to do it this year I just need to actually put in the time on it okay okay so that was number 11 number 12 is one of my favorites Ta-da! This is Japanese Octagon Box by Chatelaine. I've only done three of the panels. I have five to go. Um, I won't be making it into the full box. I'll put a picture here of what, it, what the box is supposed to look like when it's done. Um, I'll just be finishing this one piece and framing it just as a wall. Just framing it on the wall, as, just as you see it there. Um, I've seen other people do that and it looks great. And I'm just not in, I don't really like the top and bottom, the top of the box. Yeah. Um, so I think this is very achievable this year. These panels don't actually take all that long to stitch up. And I've done all the worst part, which is the outline of all of them. So it should be very achievable this year. I hope so. <laughs> and I love working on it. It's so pretty. I'm getting more and more disorganized because everything is just stacked up in piles around me. Um, so Japanese Octagon Box was number 12. Number 13 is Love and Wisdom by The Drawn Thread. You guys just saw this in my last video. This is how much I've done. Just the top quarter or so. I will definitely be able to finish this this year. Um, number 14. 
Merchant Mermaid by Mirabilia. I love her. She's so pretty. I like that she's in an ad, so she's got some context. She's not just a mermaid floating there doing nothing, which someone pointed out about Mirabilia is they're just ladies sitting on chairs gazing off into the distance and there's kind of no context and no story in them. Um, and now that someone said that, I can't unsee that in a lot of the designs. So I like that this one, at least it looks like an ad. Um, and here is my progress so far. Not very much. Obviously, I've just come down the middle of her tail. That's a judgmental nun who doesn't like the whores of the sea. <laughs> That's what mermaids are, if you didn't know. Whores of the sea. <laughs> um, if you're in the... It's either the snarky cross-stitch group or the... Whatever the F you want cross-stitch group. Whores of the sea. Um, the fabric I'm using was cedar plank. 32 count, 32, I think, um, by Lakeside Linens, but when I got it, it was too grey, so I just dyed it myself with some green and some brown, I think, and I actually much prefer the colour now. It's looking a bit brown to you, but it's actually green, a dark khaki. So I'm not sure if I will finish this this year. I started it in November last year, 2017. And the Movember stitch along, you're supposed to finish your mermaid by November in 2018. So I'd like to do that, but I don't know if I will. I enjoyed working on it until I got to this sparkle stuff. Um, this is Krynik. Um, I can see it on the ground there. What's it called? Yes, my threads are on the ground all the time. My room's a mess. It's called, um, I think it's blending filament, yes. And this stuff is horrible. It's like a ribbon. You can see it. You can see it coming off the top of the spool there. There. It's like a flat ribbon. It's the worst. It's so hard to work with. Don't enjoy it. Um, but you know, there's there's no treasure bear, treasure braid conversion for blending filament. So I'll stick with it. It's okay. It looks good. It's very effective. Very sparkly, isn't it? Ooh, sparkle. So that is number. 14. Okay, number 15 and 16. I know you'll recognize this. This is um, the Prairie School Alphabet, obviously. I started this during Mania this year. I'm doing it on a huge piece. Huge piece of 27 count linen that came from my mum's stash. It's so big, like, it's massive. Um, so obviously they're all going on one piece. Um, it's 27 count something from my mum's collection. It's really soft linen. It actually feels like wool or something. It's really, it's very nice. Um, I finished A in 2017. In 2018 I'd like to finish B and C. I'd actually like to finish more, but I'm only going to commit to B and C. Um, and that'll finish off the first leaflet. So good, good, good. Yeah, so that's number 15 and 16. So there's a few changes I think I want to make in this as well. Um, the red colour that they use is very dark. The called for red. Um, I'll show you in a moment. It's very dark and you can't see the letters um, at the bottom of the chart. How did I fold this before? It's just not working. Okay. See the A there? You can hardly read it. So I've heard that somebody actually changed the called for red to a lighter colour all the way through the whole thing. Um, I'll think about that, but the, at least what I'll do is unpick that letter A and just let it be black on plain fabric rather than black and red. So yeah, that is 15 and 16. Number 17, you would have seen this pretty recently, I worked on it in November I think. Regal Peacocks by Teresa Winsler. This came from a magazine, Just Cross Stitch. Um, January, February 1989. That's the cover. This one is a man of sense that I've seen some people doing by Shibish Designs. <laughs> when in love I do commence, may it be with a man of sense. Um, yeah, but I'll be doing the peacocks because I like it. And that's what I have done so far. There's actually a surprising amount of work in this. Um, lots of blended threads. 
lots of lots of backstitching and the chart is hand drawn so it's really hard to read and decipher it's hard to tell where the backstitching is supposed to go the backstitches go right across the um, diagonally across the symbol so it's hard to tell what's supposed to be underneath it and it's hand drawn so uh, it's a little bit of a nightmare but it'll be worth it because it's so pretty um, and the fabric I'm using is a 36 count even weave um, and it's opalescent it's not the opalescent that is shot through threads it's sort of sprayed on sort of stuff it's like glue with glitter in it it's hard to describe because the back isn't opalescent the front is um, and I did opalescent because the actual design doesn't have any no metallics no blending filament no beads nothing um, and I like that sparkling Teresa Wensler designs and I thought of blending some of the colors with blending filament just a like um, tre uh, um, what's that stuff called that you use in heaven and earth designs that's really like pearlescent I thought of that but in the end it's easier just to do it on an opalescent fabric so uh, Regal Peacocks is number 17 number 18 is called The Sewing Chest of Nantucket Sister Sailor Sarah Elliott and it looks like this so <clears throat> I have the box, actually my mum has the box, she has the Scrimshaw ruler. Um, all of these little extra pieces are all in this chart and of course the box top. So this is no longer available, it's by Primitive Traditions. This is no longer available, this whole thing. Um, you can get the box top just by itself, um, the chart for it. Um, but you can't get the box and you can't get the chart for all these little smalls anymore. I'm making this for my mum. I bought the kit and the box and everything for her for her 50th birthday in 2010. <laughs> and her 60th birthday is coming up in 2020. Um, and I'd like to have it done by then. <laughs> but I'm hoping this year that I'll be able to finish all the stitching. And then next year I'll probably try and do all the finishing. <laughs> Don't know. I think... It should be achievable. The problem I have with this is motivation. I never want to work on it. Um, I'll show you what I've done so far. This is the box top. So there's a lot of work still to go. But yeah, it looks good. I like it a lot, actually. I just don't enjoy working on it for, not, for lots of reasons. Um, the ocean is so cute with the checkerboard ocean. Ugh, I don't have enough hands to show you everything I want to show you. The checkerboard ocean is gorgeous. Love it. Okay, so hopefully I will feel a little more motivated to get work done on that this year. I'm going to lose my needle. Okay. So that's number... That is number 18. Number 19. It's been a long time since you saw this one, guys. <laughs> Shroomhilda by Dimples Designs. This is out of print. I want to finish this so I can pass the chart on to someone else. I'm doing a chart swap. So I'll pass this one on and they're going to send me one of the other ones in this series. This is the Fun Guys collection. Fun Guys. <laughs> um, there's one called A Mother's Love with a mother and child shroom. There's one called The Bride and Shroom um, with a man and wife getting married. And there's one called the, like, the Mushroom Tabernacle Choir. And it's a lot of those tall white shrooms all together with little bow ties on singing. They're adorable. Um, but they're hard to find because, of course, all the Terence Nolan designs are out of print now. And, yeah. So here's all I've done on this so far. Not very much. Just um, a bit of the bottom of her there. So I've got work to do on her. But she's fun to work on, at least. Ah, uh, that's 1920. Is the Silver Medieval Sampler. This one's also no longer available. Um, it's by Desun's DHC. Um, and there it is, that's what it looks like. It's all done in white and greys. There's no metallics or anything in it. And since it's sort of a nighttime sunflower, I thought it would look nice on an opalescent fabric. I don't use opalescent fabrics very often, so I choose them, I choose my projects for them carefully. And I made a tiny, tiny start on this in December. So that is the W. On the alphabet there, I've got a lot, a lot to go on this still, but I, I like it. It's very pretty. It'll be fun to do. The fabric is 32 count opalescent river sticks by Under the Sea Fabrics. 
Yeah, it looks good. I like it. Uh, number 21 was also a new start in December. It is the Singer Sampler series by Silver Creek Samplers. Um, this is part one. My commitment for 2018 is just to finish part one. Um, parts of samplers can actually count as finishes. Um, that's why for the Prairie School Alphabet, each part is counting as a finish. Um, that's the rules of the Year of Whips. So here's how much I've done so far. Not very much. I need to edge my fabric. Um, this is a large piece, so it'll fit all the way across. Um, it's 40 count something, I don't know, soft ivory I think it was, 40 count soft ivory. Um, and I like it. I have made the tiniest little start in the world. <laughs> pathetic. I mean, that is the most pathetic start ever. Um, yeah, so I'd like to finish part one. I might finish all of it, but I'm only going to commit to part one. Um, <coughs> number 22, everyone remembers this one. This is Siren Jady. Love it, love it, love it. There you go, that's a little bit better. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. For sure, I'll finish this this year. I love it, and I just, I think about it all the time. I want to pull it out and work on it all the time. And now I'm set up with my chair and my Lowry properly in this room. I'll be getting it out to work on it pretty soon. I love it. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, 32 Count Black Belfast from Zweigart. Um, silks, 1 over 2. Coverage doesn't look bad, really. When you get up close, you can definitely see gaps, but silks are a little bit um, heavier than DMC, so the coverage is a bit better. Love it. Oh my gosh, can't wait to work on it. Um, okay, that was number 22. Number 23 is the Strawberry Sampler. This is one I started in December. Um, it's by Darlene Osteen of The Needle's Praise. I think this is also out of print, I'm sorry. I haven't done much on this. <laughs> As you can see, not much at all. When I started this, I thought, oh, this will stitch up really quickly. It's all backstitch, um, no worries. <laughs> but um, the chart actually explains how to do reversible, like double running stitch technique. So that's what I've been doing. So if you look at this, it's actually completely reversible. But look on the other side, it's perfect. I'm so proud of that. I love it. It's my new favorite thing. Ta-da! Um, yeah, so it actually takes a lot longer um, to do because you need to plan out your route and think about making sure you can come back and complete the whole motif without carrying over any gaps or anything. So take some planning out. So it's going to take me a bit longer. It's not just a matter of simple backstitch. Um, so I'm not sure if I will get this finished this year because it's quite intensive and not always the most interesting thing to work on. Um, there's also some reversible backstitch down here, which I've done before, but I, I obviously don't remember very well how to do it, so there we go. So the strawberry sampler, not sure if I will actually get that finished, but I would like to, let's see. Um, and number 24, the last one, is Tranquility Sampler by Stickadeen von der Wienberg. I can't say that. I don't have a picture of what this looks like when it's finished. I started this in 2007 when it was a mystery stitch along and I love it. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, this is the halfway point right here. Um, that's the full width so I'm probably a third of the way done. Um, I think it's very achievable for me to finish this this year, but I'm going to need to work on it sort of regularly to make that happen. I think my plan is going to be every weekend I'll try to finish one motif. So that'll actually have me finish pretty soon in the year. Um, the fabric is 32 count opalescent Lugana called Cashmere Glitz from Silk Weaver. I love this. It's so pretty. I'm just using random colours that I have in my stash um, from Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts and whatever. So yeah, love that. 
I'd love to finish this this year. I love it. And that's it. That's it, guys. That's all of them. Um, that's 24. There's actually 25 because we all have to start a mystery whip um, that we don't show in our video. So I'm going to, I still have to film it every three months when I do my year of whips update, but it has to be a secret until the end of the year. Um, I'll give you a little preview though. There you go. It's a kit. It's not a very big one. Um, it has to represent soulful stitching. Um, and I struggled with that because I don't really know what soulful means. Um, but I think this fits. It's about personal strength and just self-discovery. Um, and I think that means soulful stitching. Anyway, I'll talk about it in my, I'm going to do a little tiny video now just for that one whip. And you won't see it until the end of the year. So thank you for watching my year of whips. Um, yeah, happy stitching. I'll see you in three months for another update. I'm sure that like three quarters of these will be done by then. Yeah. No. <laughs> nope. Um, do you think I've been too ambitious? I think I have. I, w I won't finish all of them, but I only have to finish half of them. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I have big plans. Um, I have big plans for many starts this year as well. So if I have too many starts, I won't get these done. So I will have to be disciplined. Let's see. Alright, bye guys. Happy stitching.